and welcome to Lacuna Festivals Flash 2022. You're here with me, Sarah Jane Mason, Festival Director, for tonight's exciting presentation um, of the mural Sempre Viva, which was organised by tonight's compare Sarah Misselbrook. So I'm going to hand straight over to her. Excellent. Thanks, Sarah Jane. Um, yeah, I just first of all, just want to say a huge thank you to you, Sarah Jane, and to Simon. Um, hope he watches this recording. Um, I've got a few notes, but first of all, yeah, I just wanted to say a huge thank you because um, it's things like this that we've sort of connected during the pandemic and um, that have really created really strong artistic connection, connections. Um, that's been sort of throughout our time here in Catalonia, um, a local um, focus, but then during the pandemic, it became very, very difficult to sort of keep in, keep connected and keep in touch. So I wanted to thank you guys for the opportunities that you um, give to so many different artists all across the world. Um, and just huge congratulations on your um, month full of amazing creativity in the month of July for your festivals. Um, for those of you who don't know or are watching this recording and um, have no idea who I am, um, my name is Sarah Misselbrook and I am this evening representing, I am an artist myself, but this evening I am representing the Reba Rocks Association. And um, we're based in just outside a small village called Reba Roja Debre in Catalonia in Spain. Um, and like Lacuna Festivals, we are a group of artists who are working with and for other artists. Um, as I said, I connected with Lacuna last summer, but as an artist, I connected with them under their um, theme of distance um, and created a piece of work um, for them then, um, sort of realizing that we had quite a lot in common and wanted to um, further develop that connection and that relationship. So this is why um, we're, we're trying to keep in touch, albeit from a, from a distance still. Um, yeah, so to create connections, I suppose, on both a very local level, but hopefully sustainably on a global level, um, digital and um, bringing international artists uh, to Catalonia, as Lacuna do now to um, Lanzarote, um, I bet it's been absolutely fantastic to see the return of some in-person um, events and, and galleries and exhibitions, physical exhibitions, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as the online, amazing online presence you have. Um, as I said, yeah, we are based in Reba Rocha Debre. Reba Rocks is a not-for-profit organisation um, and all of our directors and our members work on a volunteer basis, another thing we have in common with Lacuna. Um, Reba Rocks Association organises uh, a project in the village called the Rio Dart street fest and um, Rio is river in Catalan so it literally means river of art. We're situated very close to the um, river, the very famous river Ebro. Um, each year, um, pandemic aside, we invite local and international artists to um, reside and if they don't already come and live in the work uh, and in the village and work in the village or on our off-grid um, olive farm, which we affectionately know, uh, call the Valley. Um, local and international artists create um, large-scale murals, um, small-scale interventions, illustrations, installations, sculptural works, and live and recorded performances. And the permanent works that have been created since 2016 have now make up the Rio Dart open air gallery um, in the streets of Riva Roja Debre. Artworks are on private and public buildings in private houses, um, garden spaces, public pieces of land. Um, and we now, um, we now have over 30 pieces of work on that tour and offer guided tours to locals and visitors alike. Um, our general focus with Rio Dart is to offer artists the opportunity to travel and reside here and to really experience uh, the place and for that to have some kind of effect 
on them personally or their work professionally or hopefully both. Um, sustainable rural development is one of Rebarox's main objectives. Um, the artwork is fully accessible as it's out in the public space in the streets. Um, it's accessible to all residents. Um, all residents are asked if they would like um, to be part of or to, to um, have a, a piece of work on their on their building or their business or um, and then visitors obviously are, are free to wander the streets of Riberosha to view the work. Um, these guided tours that we offer in the streets of Riberosha also then encompass local businesses, for example, the local artisan bakery, the local um, honey producers. So as people are actually wandering the streets of Riberosha to view the artworks, we're also um, trying to highlight the local products that the villagers um, create. Um, and then looking at the sustainable economy of um, pushing the uh, sort of eco-tourism um, and um, sort of the financing of further projects. Um, so basically that's enough about Reba Rocks, but why are we here this evening? Okay, in the month of May of this year, um, Reba Rocks hosted four wonderful individuals from Scotland and England. Um, we had Diva Keith, Jodie Lilly, Eden Parks and Emma Jones. Um, I don't think Emma Jones is here with us this evening, um, but hopefully she'll watch the recording. So hi, Emma. Um, this placement um, for 32 days, um, every, they, uh, the participants stayed in the valley with us here on the off-grid olive farm. And it was part of an Erasmus, Erasmus Plus funded placement. Um, it encompassed a variety of activities, um, including land art, illustration, mask making, and then culminated in the creation of a large scale mural in the village of Riberoja. These activities are facilitated by local artists and illustrators. Um, so as I said before, local um, villagers and neighbours offer up their walls, their gardens, their garage doors to be adorned with the contemporary artwork. These four creatives were given a large wall in Santo Domingo for their artwork, and it's now a part of the Rio Dart Open Air Gallery. Um, this evening they'll be talking about their experience here in Ribarroja and what inspired their artwork. Followed by a short video clip and then we'll take any questions um, as Sarah Jane has said to put in the chat box or we can just have a, a general informal chat. Um, I'd like to thank you all for attending this evening's event. A huge thank you again to Lacuna Festivals. And now um, it will be my pleasure once I explain that I'll be sharing my screen. So I do apologize for any technical delays. Um, it's my absolute pleasure to um, introduce the first artist to present, and that is Diva Keith. Thank you very much, Sarah, and thank you, Lacuna Festivals, for having us today. Okay. Okay, we're all ready to go. Yeah, let's go. Our first few days in Riba Roja played a very important part in moulding and informing the ideas for our mural. The first day we arrived after the annual Women's Association Festival, Klotcha and Paella competition, we wandered around the meandering reeds where we found the colossal hydroelectric, hydroelectric dam of Riba Roja. This concrete mass was filled with birdsong and gave a terrific view of the luscious land and meandering mountains surrounding the area. On this initial visit here, I appreciated the bendy sculptural curves within the concrete and how they sat in juxtaposition with thick box-like structures. There was a visible contrast of free-flowing and restricted. The river banks were bustling, filled with reeds plants, trees, flowers, and wildlife. The swift birds were everywhere, always chirping away, which we felt we have to, had to represent in our mural. 
We tried to harmonize with the chaotic plants in our artwork with artistic techniques, imagery, and concepts encouraging natural ecosystems and biodiversity and also renewable green energy sources. And the next slide, Sarah, that's okay, thanks. The following day we were introduced to the Rudar Open Air Gallery and had the pleasure of a guided tour from Sarah and Chris of the 31 varying artworks on display. As I passed through the quiet and quaint streets of Riba Roja Debre, there was a visible sense of community and creativity, which the Rudar project illustrated. Viewing the different murals, installations, sculptures was inspiring to see, as the possibilities expanded beyond a flat 2D rectangular painting. We, could, we were free to use mixed media, found materials, illustration and collage. This day, we were also first introduced to the wall in Santa Domingo. That would soon become the 32nd edition to the Rudar Street Fest. This was our mural space. Here we felt the surfaces and visualized what could be. Here we were able to familiarize with ourselves, the surrounding environment, the nature, or any, un any additional unplanned features. For example, the pipe on the left, just visible in that photo, was unexpected. Therefore, we considered it as part of the design and now it, it, it further adds to the, the mural's beauty and personality. And the next slide. Throughout it all, we were followed by the wind turbines. They were visible from most places with the hydroelectric dam producing renewable energy and a rotative solar panel farm in the next village. It felt right to include these big friendly giants into our mural. Again, we felt that representation of renewable energy sources within this art piece would be seen as a positive reflection that they bring a much needed green change. There's, we also seen a soft conjunction with the silhouette of the wind turbines and the dandelions, the fairy dandelions that blow in the wind. They softly blow in the wind, the both of them, and they are beautiful. Now I will pass you over to Jodie Lilly. Thank you. Thanks, Eva. Um, yeah, so as Eva mentioned, we... We saw the dam in our first week and we were actually lucky enough to have a guided tour inside the dam. Um, we, we got to see the dam open as well and the huge mass of water that was plummeting out of it. It was, it was really, really striking to see such a brutalist structure um, and how it contrasted so, so much to the tranquil environment that it was in. If you could share the next picture, please, Sarah. Yeah, you can see here it's so man-made and then so tranquil in the background. Um, the location of the wall for our mural was also something that lingered on our minds, I think. It was situated between the older part of Reba Roger, um, which is a farming part traditionally, and the newer area, Santa Domingo. Um, this is an area that was mostly constructed by an immigrant workforce who were employed to build the dam. So its architecture was quite different to the rest of the village and even though the two areas are completely integrated nowadays, the wall felt like it was bridging a space between them. So with this in mind, we thought it would be interesting to create something that was an ode to the beauty and the contrast between the natural world and the order that humans carve into it. I personally was really inspired by the control room. Um, and the array of buttons and panels that control each tiny element of the river. This translated into a section of the mural with clean straight lines and buttons made from man-made plastic bottle caps. Um, we illustrated each one of these with a different natural form um, and we grouped them by categories like plants or insects. This was meticulously planned and executed and it really contrasted the free and somewhat chaotic section beyond the control panel. So I'll hand you over to Eden Parks, who will talk a bit more about this section. Thanks, Jodie. So the name of our mural, Sempre Viva, 
um, is a traditional Catalonian word, which came from one of our translators when we were doing a location drawing walk around the woods um, near to Viva Roja. She pointed out these flowers, which if you go into the next slide, Sarah, um, are um, <laughs> on the left, on the right hand side, sorry, those bright yellow flowers. She said that she would pick them and have them in her house. Um, because the colour was everlasting. The name then of Sempre Viva translates directly into always alive. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's in your house for years, she said that it's yellow forever. Um, looking around, we find that these natural forms were everywhere and it didn't matter if it was man-made or grown, everything around us was alive. The water, the trees, the plants, that's why we found this fitting title, as in the end, nature will always win, is everlasting, the beauty will continue on without us. Most of the nature that inspired our mural came from the nature reserve just across the river from Ribaraja. With this beauty and wildflowers and birds, we visited multiple times to see and explore, taking inspiration from everything around us. The poppies were so prominent and were found in villages and roads and walkways that we took every day or whether we were just sitting in the finca we were surrounded by them so that's why they had to be quite a prominent feature for us as well as the rosemary and the sempre viva obviously doing the location drawing which should be on the next slide uh, doing the location drawing and visiting the wall as diva mentioned we collectively brought our ideas together and created a flow between the control and the chaos experimenting with various mediums and styles before inputting each other's designs together to create a final piece to feature on Otto's wall. As you can see, we chose to draw with massive chunks of juniper charcoal that we'd created ourselves and taking big sketchbook boards into the, the fields and the woods to sit and draw directly from the nature, which then inspired us so strongly to have the chaos continue onto the wall. Uh, in the next slide, in these photos, you can see how we've taken the beauty and given a slice of it to Otto to have on his wall. He told us before he started that he loved flowers and plants, which we could clearly tell by his beautiful garden. But before we'd even spoken to Otto, we knew that the, the nature would clearly be a part of this mural. On the next slide, you can see that we have taken inspiration from the birds as well, featured next to the wind turbines that Diva has mentioned flowing in the wind. These beautiful stalks were a main feature within the nature reserve, as shown in one of the videos, you'll get to hear them doing their call, which we were all fascinated about. And altogether, these beautiful parts of nature have created this wall of both 2D and 3D elements that has a slice of each of us in there that we hope people get to enjoy for many years to come. So thank you for listening and enjoy these little videos.
Okay, um, I hope that wasn't too um, glitchy with the with the screen sharing, and um, I'd like to hand back over to Sarah Jane. Okay, let's begin by um, unmuting, starting the video so we can actually see me. That's always a good plan. And I'm just going to go through and I'm going to um, add spotlights onto all of our artists as well as our compa eden where are you there you are okay here we all are lovely um so thank you so much for presenting that to us it was really lovely to see the sort of snapshot of the area as well as your like particular bits of inspiration i thought that was really um well done so thank you so much for taking the time to put all that together for us um are there any questions out in the audience and whilst um, I'm waiting for these to come through you can either type them in the chat if you're a little bit shy or you can raise your hand on the um, reactions button if you would like to. Um, so we'll give some space for that to happen and whilst that happens I'm going to take um, the luxury of being the host and ask the first question if that's okay um, and this is around the juniper charcoal because you very casually said Oh, when we use this juniper charcoal that we made ourselves, like as if everybody makes their own materials. So I thought if you could maybe talk a little bit more about that, like the process, how you did it, is it easy to do? Could other people do it? So yeah, the, the juniper charcoal is, it was super easy to make. You can make it with most types of woods. Um, so we were lucky enough to get a massive, um, barrel I guess it was an oil barrel was emptied out and given to us by a local who uses juniper to create like sculptures and bowls and things like that and he had some offcuts so um he gave Sarah a big bucket and as well as those we used some um olive uh, branches that we cut off ourselves from the olive trees from Sarah's farm and Chris um and it's so easy just cut them down to whatever size you want, whether you want tiny ones, big ones, chunky, um, then you just wrap them in loads of tin foil and then chuck them on a fire. And then That's simple. you have charcoal, yeah. So we experimented with all the different types and it was great to use on the wall as well because it just felt really natural and gave a, a good effect as well as we were easy to kind of cover over it when we were ready to. So yeah, it was lovely. How did it compare to charcoal that you would buy? Because I know you can get like compressed charcoal, which is just like fake, isn't it really? Let's be honest. And then you can get kind of more natural stuff. But how did it compare to that more natural stuff? Was it a similar experience or was it? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Sometimes you would hit like, depending if you got a bit with like a bit of hard bark, um, you wouldn't really get quite a smooth drawing, but you could just like rub it on some rock and then you'd get back down to like the softer stuff. Um, or you get some things, depending on how long it was on the fire for, it could be quite crumbly, but then you could use it as like a powder, I suppose. So it was nice to be able to have that kind of contrast and then work with the unpredictability of it. Yeah, thank you so much. That's great. We've got a question that's come through in the chat. Let me just bring that up. This is... Um, from Chris Thornton. How did you all feel about working collaboratively and on a large scale artwork? Um, so where should we go first? Uh, Diva, let's go to you first. Um, I mean, yeah, I love to work collaboratively, in all honesty. Um, I thought that it was it, it it's a great way to explore different people's way of thinking what they find interesting um and you can often just get more exciting results if you've if you've got multiple i don't know brains on the same project thinking at thinking um all at the same time uh yeah that what yeah yeah i would i would uh Oh, I've not got the question. I forgot the second half of the question. The second half of the question was about it being large scale. Do you normally work large mm. scale? Was that something new for you? Um, large scale, that 
type of large scale, it's not often I work to that type of, I've done um, a, a mural beforehand that was uh, about 28 meters long. I think this wall was about 12, um, but that was, that was more of a textile painting repeat uh, type, not as free and illustrative as the one we created. Um, and, but when I am working in sketchbooks, I do prefer to work in larger sketchbooks, A2, A3, uh, compared to smaller ones. Um, but no, I find it, I find it, I, I, I think I find it's challenging, I think as well. And you develop more as a, an artist, as a creative, if you put yourself in these uh, unfamiliar situations, you know, trying to make these like, for instance, I did the stock, trying to replicate a stock and that type of size, it, it is challenging, but it, it all adds to the experience, it's fun. But I'll yeah. pass on to somebody else. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I remember the first time I worked on a large scale and the first thing I was doing was like marking it out a bit like you guys did with the charcoal. And all I had to do was like draw a circle. And I always draw freehand, I don't use any sort of equipment. And I drew it and I stepped back and I was just like, oh, this is going to be very different. <laughs> it was just like not good at yeah. all. <laughs> um, okay, let's go over to Jody next. Um, let me know if you need a reiteration of the question. No, that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I completely agree with what you guys are saying about how it's, it's difficult sometimes to conceptualise what it'll actually look like at such a big scale. Um, so a lot of the time, I, I drew a lot of the lines, so when I was drawing those and trying to get the angles right, I would have to have somebody behind me saying, like, is this exactly straight, is this, because it is a very different perspective, but it was, it was lovely at the same time to have so much space to do whatever you want with, there's so much more freedom and you can go into so much more detail with such a large scale, so I, I agree, it was a really challenging and really um, interesting um, scale that I learned a lot from yeah and even even with working with different people there was like Emma made a really good way to visualize how the things that I had in my sketchbook could go onto the wall and I think that's another part of working collaboratively that I love is that you see different perspectives from people that you've not considered before um, whether that's just like logically how to do something like that or if it's from a completely different creative angle if it's techniques or the, the um, color scheme that we used I thought there was some really interesting like yeah different ways that each of us um, thought we could go about it and yeah we all had kind of different bits that we were each particularly inspired by so I think it just adds more and more to your end product when you have so many different sources of inspiration that you can bring into it. So yeah, I really loved working collabor collaboratively with it. Thanks so much, Jodie. Um, and over to you, Eden. Yeah, it was it was such a great experience. Um, I've done, like Diva mentioned before, we did the previous wall together. It was so different having a little bit more freedom on a slightly smaller scale, but having that space to I don't know, get a little bit personal with it, I guess, but then have the the loveliness of having people around you supporting you and you're supporting them on whatever they need help with and you can rely on them for support all of the time as well as just, I don't know, it was just such a lovely time to have, whether we were discussing the art or what we should add or colours or it was just we were able to have honest opinions with each other about what we did and didn't like. And sometimes your idea wouldn't come to anything, but that was fine because you knew that the end result would be the best option for everybody. Um, and it was nice to have some good playlists on the go as well. It's always good. Um, but yeah, the, the scale and having the opportunity to work with new artists is always a good thing, I think, to, to learn from your peers, I guess. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So you said that you and Diva worked together on the um, 
the the mural that you spoke about. Um, so you two already knew each other. Did you know Jodie and Emma? Were they new to you? Yeah, so they were both new. Me and Diva did the same course in Dundee. We did textile design together. And then last year we went to uh, Cyprus to do a Grand Heritage trip again. That's where we did the previous wall. So, yeah. Ah, okay. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, yeah, I can do. Um, so we went to Cyprus just after graduating because it was just like, what else do you do after you graduate? Of course you go and do random things for a month. So we went to Cyprus and we did a massive wall mural and mosaics and we did a bit of pottery and icon painting and it was a very different experience from Spain because there was more of us living in a house um, kind of away from the hosts whereas Spain gave us the opportunity to like sit and have lovely dinners and it was just a great experience to have them to compare to each other and have the memories of both so different but so the same all at the same time. But yeah, I think for me, Cyprus was a great initial starting point to get into Grampus, to then learn more and to take on to Spain. And I don't know how you feel about it all, Diva. Um, yeah, I feel I feel the same. Um, I, I, are you interested in the mural that we done in, in Cyprus? Yeah, I was interested in maybe where you went and what that space was like and just, yeah, the comparison between the space there and the space that you had in Spain and then the comparison between the murals, which you've spoken about a little bit already. I know, I'm just trying to ease more, that's all. <laughs> no, as I understand. Um, we were, it was kind of the same kind of uh, set up as as in Catalonia, um, based in a more rural uh, small village. We were in I don't know I, I, Pano Lefkara, um, in Cyprus. Uh, but like Eden said, the housing arrangements was different. The uh, just everything uh, in that way. We were staying with a lot more people, which was great. But um, you know, just close and personal with staying with a lot of people, like uh it, it it was a great experience um but the mu the things that we done uh there oh, the things that we uh done um in Cy in cyprus uh i suppose were a little were more um kind of personal projects rather than uh spain felt really a lot more reflective in a way um yeah I would yeah I would say that okay thank you I have questions coming in left right and center some of them are going on the, the chat and some of them are coming in person in the personal direct ones so let me go to those ones first okay so I guess this one is actually aimed more at um yourself Sarah if artists are wanting to connect with your open art gallery how can they do that oh great great question thank you very much um <clears throat> blatant self-promotion coming up <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah you can just have a look at our um websites we've got um rebarocks.com and then redart.cat or you can look at us on the socials um instagram rebarocks redart or Facebook we're on as well, Reba Rocks, Reba Dart, or you can just send a personal email to info at Reba Rocks .com. Um, The We're slowly, steadily and slowly getting back into things after the pandemic. Um, so we are hosting um, another Reba Dart in early September. Um, we're just liaising with possible artists over that, but there's still some places left. So if anybody's interested, um, then yeah, um, please, please get in touch. Um, and that will be obviously repeated again the following September. Um, <clears throat> but other than that, we also, we always do sort of artistic projects in the valley here as well on the olive farm. So like, Eden was saying about the charcoal making. Sarah Jane, you're going to have to come over and, and do a charcoal making workshop with us, right? Um, <laughs> it's so much fun. And it's obviously the olive trees always need pruning as well. So you just, it's killing two birds with one stone. It's just, it's wonderful. 
Um, so yeah, a bit of charcoal making, we can do, we do land art all throughout the year on, in the valley. We do <clears throat> performances, we, we do a few little impromptu music things. So there's always things going on, it, but the actual um, Rio Dart open air gallery in the village is, is going to be in September this year and next. So that's, as, I think that's enough. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Let me go back to my chat messages. Okay, this is a knowledge-based question. What is the name of the yellow flower that always stays yellow that inspired you? Does anyone know? <laughs> Sempre Viva? Yay! Yeah. Ah, so that was okay. Yeah, it wasn't just a beautiful. description of the plant. That's no. what it's actually called. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Nice. Um, easy answer for that one. Okay, we've got another one here. Um, since you tra all travelled such a long way, um, from a different part of Europe, coming from the UK, obviously, and going to um Spain, is there anything that made you feel more connected? Um, or an understanding of Catalonia which influenced you? It's a really interesting question. Um, let's go for Jodie first. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I think one thing that I think it's fair to say for all of us made us instantly feel connected to at least Reba Roger was just everybody in the village was so lovely and so um, welcoming to us. So we spent a lot of time with Chris and Sarah, our hosts, in the first weeks, just sort of, yeah, going on trips, getting to see people, getting to meet people, um, and really having an insight into how they live. And so we had like a, a session at the bakery um, where they just welcomed us in for the entire evening and we chatted about them and about what we were doing. And so I think really having that personal perspective of, of the people that lived in that village, um, it's definitely something that made me feel connected to the area and also there's there's other murals in the um the real the real dart gallery um the open air gallery that reflect the history of catalonia um quite well so um there's one of like a, an angel kind of figure standing on on a pile of books and this sort of represents how um the history of catalonia was have tried to be erased basically by Spain in, in all of the time all that happened and how a lot of the knowledge and a lot of Catalan was passed down through generations by the women in the community. So there's a lot of things from the village that we took as well and that we mulled over um, to think about what we wanted to include in our mural. And those things definitely came up as ideas. We went with a slightly different theme in the end, but um, yeah, for me, there was a lot of things that made me feel really connected. Thank you. Um, and let's go to Ethan. I totally agree. The, the locals were the highlight, if not the best thing about the trip. Um, everybody was so welcoming. And even if there was a bit of a language bar barrier, Sarah would obviously help us out with translations. But sometimes I feel like in Catalonia, in the language, you could kind of understand what they were saying, even if you didn't know exactly what they were saying. Um, we had lovely um, translators and our like artists and guides when we went to our workshops. Um, Isabel, that only spoke in Catalonia, would come and talk right next to you and act like you knew what you were saying and you kind of did in a way. And it, it made you feel homely and like accepted and you didn't feel outcast or anything because of the language. It just felt more inviting and you wanted to know what she was saying. and as well as the nature for me was amazing to see all these birds and plants and wildlife that I've never really considered before being in such a hot country. I suppose we went before the heat wave, but to see it thriving and all these wild flowers growing everywhere and the locals accepting that and using nature to the best of its abilities and trying to be as sustainable as possible was amazing to see, especially living in a city going straight back into nature was, was amazing. So, yeah. 
Thanks, Eden. And we're going to come back to sustainability with our next question, but let's just give um, Eva a chance to answer this one first. Um, I feel, uh, can I, I agree with uh, Jodie and Eden. The people of the village really uh, helped in um, making us feel welcome. I think they didn't act as if, like, as I said, I, we were just, we we're four artists coming over into their uh, village and just doodling on their wall. Uh, but you know they were they were lovely and they were really encouraging and people driving past were just like thumbs up and like yeah great smiles and it was it was great and even like especially at the end the friday presentation there was a lot of people that came together about 30 people came for our presentation of the mural um, and i felt that that just like was just another highlight of the 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 genuine people that are there and that they are connected and they want to stay connected with the the young people and what their what their thoughts and views are and yeah that's really nice to have that much support isn't it that's great um okay back to sustainability so this question is about the dam um and it says the dam was a huge inspiration for your work what do you all think about the sustainability of it? Um, so let's go to Eden first this time. So I think there's a bit of controversy when it comes to that because of visiting the nature reserve. They said that there was a lot of pros and cons that come with that, mostly cons in the fact that it didn't allow nature to take its course and continue to help biodiversity and it would destroy a lot of the water in not a very good way and keep it stagnant and not flowing and that had its problems within itself but I think for us now to be able to harness energy from um, nature is a way forward and um, so I am I would say I was for it but also there is a lot of other options out there like the wind turbines that we also featured we didn't feature the um uh solar power but that was everywhere as well there's a lot of solar power i think the dam for us was just the sheer power and size that it had and how it, it is kind of created a community around it and the sustainability fact of it i think with anything will have its pros and cons um, but we thought it was important to feature it because it had such a deep history within the culture and the community and the landscape because you can see it from so far away. Um, so yeah, I hope that clears that up for me. <laughs> um, okay, Diva, have you got anything to add around the sustainability? I would, um, I... I agree with Eden basically uh, along the lines of we we're aware like of we we went to the nature reserve we talked to people that work uh, within the the Ebre and try to encourage more biodiversity but it was um I think we gravitated more towards the dam because we were lucky enough to experience the dam opening um and it happens like once a year um, and that happened on like the fifth day we were there or something so it felt just quite special that's why we we done that but but I agree like I would probably I would say in my humble opinion I would that there is better energy sources out there as even the debt like first you have to dig into the ground you have to upset the 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 sea the riverbed the wildlife and the marine life that's in there everything that is there and cover it all with concrete and that's also that is not the most sustainable of materials whether that concrete is even being made locally that's another question and then just all the materials that is like all the like all, all of the materials that are used to create that machine 
I don't think, in my personal opinion, that it, it balances that because, like, just even even from talking to like the 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 people in the nature reserve, the restrictive flow of the dam, the river, the restrictive flow of the river water, um, mean like there's there's just sediment that stays still and it doesn't continue to move and algae builds and reeds, uh, reeds build as well and within the reeds I think there is a, a pest fly called the black fly that is quite destructive to humans and animals um, so just I think a number of reasons I would more encourage like when we mentioned the solar farms the rotating solar farms that follow the sun and the um, uh, wind turbines also and of course a wave energy as another as another source of power but potentially yeah just maybe I don't know where yeah the, yeah thank you um Jodie would you like to add anything from your angle I think um Deva and Eden have covered most of what I would have said um I think yeah it's it's obviously really important to highlight how detrimental it is to the ecology around it so it obviously has a really devastating impact to a lot of the wildlife around it and the species downstream and upstream so and like Diva was saying it, it costs a huge amount of energy to make the dam so I, I don't think that it's sustainable in terms of producing more and more of these um, I think it's important that we find other green energy sources that are more sustainable um, and I think that a huge inspiration from it was just how unnatural it is. Like, it's incredible that we can harness that um, energy from nature, but it's it's such an unnatural structure. And it's 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 inspiring and and kind of scary in a way how we can have such a big impact over the natural environment, I think. Um, and obviously it's it's just sustainable in that it doesn't. Um, it doesn't now cost more energy or much more energy to to harness that energy from the water in the same way that oil or coal or you know non-renewable energy sources do. But as I said, in terms of making more, I don't think it, that that's sustainable. So yeah, I don't know. I hope that clarifies my standpoint on the sustainability of it. Thank you very much. Um, this is the last question I have in my chat. So if there's anybody else that's wanting to ask a question, get it um, typed out and sent to me whilst uh, this one is answered. Um, again, Sarah, I don't know if you might be better placed to answer this. I'm not sure. Um, it says, you mentioned Grampus a couple of times. Can you tell me what that is, please? You're on mute. It's the first time I've muted myself as well. I thought I'll just be trying to be polite like everyone else and then I forget. Um, yeah, Grampus, basically the uh, student, there are student staff placements that are run throughout um, the EU and actually outside the EU that are all funded by Erasmus Plus. So massive, massive amounts of money from the EU going filtering down to um, eventually give students or grad and or graduates and or staff the opportunity to basically they're just called mobility placements and these mobility placements are to give people the opportunity to leave their own hometown their own home village and go and have an experience in another country um, it's not just eu exclusive erasmus plus does do um uh Eastern countries, further west, so South America, but they're very, very specific about the projects that they fund in those countries. And basically, um, so Erasmus Plus now, for those of those of, uh, um, who still live in the UK, is now turning into or is being replaced by the Turing scheme. So basically, there's still going to be the same opportunities for um, UK residents, um, students, graduate staff to have those experiences, but just through another funding source. And both of these funding sources <clears throat> send their money either directly to hosts. So, for example, Reba Rocks Association is a, is a direct host. Um, and sometimes that happens to uh, with us or 
um, you'll have, I suppose, a, a middle company which um, has all uh, has relationships with uh, universities, with um, higher education colleges, and they'll act as the middle person between the funding source and the student participants. I hope that. And Grampus is one of them. Sorry, that was the answer. <laughs> there we go. Okay, thank you um, very much. So I'd like to point out that um, Sarah has put the link for Viva Rocks and Viva in the chat. So if you would um, like those, you can copy them now. Um, and let's have a check if there's anything else that's come through. No, I've got nothing else. So I'm going to um, pass back to you, Sarah, and you can wind up for us um, this evening. Lovely. Thanks, Sarah Jane. Yeah. So again, huge thank you to you, Sarah Jane, for hosting. <clears throat> um, congratulations to the artists, uh, Diva, Jody, Eden, and Emma. You'll hear. You'll hear this. Um, obviously, you're all welcome back anytime. Um, it was lovely to host you here. Um, and uh, yeah, please get in touch if anybody is interested in visiting, collaborating. Um, and I hope that Sarah Jane, you with Lacuna and Reba Rocks will continue our, our, our connection. Thank you so much, everyone. Absolutely. There has to be there has to be more to come. This was just the start, wasn't it? Definitely. Definitely. Thank you so much, artists, for giving up your time to share this with us this evening. Thank you, Sarah, for making um, this collaboration. Oh, we're getting loads of lovely emoticons coming through. I don't know if everyone can see them, but I've got like hearts going up my screen and I've got claps. Um, so just in case you can't see that, I am um, <laughs> sharing that with you. Um, yes, thank you so much. And um, this will go live onto our YouTube channel, hopefully in the next 24 hours Sarah I'll send the link directly to you and then are you okay to sort of filter that around to everybody um artists if you have an Instagram handle or if you're on Facebook put your links in the chat and then I can tag you in on all of the posts um and thank you audience members for joining us this evening for all of those questions some of those questions were super interesting um I hope you've enjoyed the evening and we'll see you again soon for another Lacuna Festival's event. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you.